we're going to take a look at another approach for the spine, and this approach will give us a far more cartoony spine. I'll start with the geometry node, and I'll call this node Ribbon Spine. I'll then enter the geometry node, and we'll be creating the spine using the line node. We will need to convert the points on this node to joints, and I'll do this using an attribute wrangle node. The attributes that we need are the name attribute and the transform attribute. First will be the name attribute, at name. The names for these joints will be point, followed by a point number. We will use the wildcard percentage %g for the point number, and we'll set the string using the sprintf function. We'll set our wildcard using the point number with at ptnum. I'm going to update the line node. This line should have four points. We will need to have four points for the controls. This will not determine the number of points we'll use for the spine itself. The next attribute that we'll need is for our transforms. This will be a matrix attribute, and we'll set this with 3 at transform. In this case, I'll set this using an identity matrix. I'll activate the visualizations for the transforms from the node info. The standard visualizations for the transforms are too large. So I'll change these by setting the scale length to 0 0.1. The visualizations for the name attribute should also be checked. So I'll activate these. In the visualizations, I'll make sure that the type is set to marker. I can now confirm that the names are correct. I will be creating two branches from the line node. The first branch, which I've already created, will be for the spine, and I'll need to create a second branch for the controls. I'll do this by duplicating my attribute wrangle node. I'll name the first of these nodes wrangle points, and the second one will be wrangle controls. In the wrangle, I'll change the name to be controls. I'll want to have more points for the spine itself. I'll do this with a resample node. This will be attached before my wrangle node. We'll not use maximum segment length. Instead, we'll use a maximum number of segments. And in this case, I'll use about eight points. I can now set up the controls for the curve and I'll start by working on the hierarchy. I'll get a reparent joints node. I will have three reparenting operations. The first point to be reparented will be the final point. In this case, it will be control three and this point will have no parent. Control 1 will then be reparented to Control 0, and Control 2 will be the child of Control 3. To manipulate the controls, we'll need a rig pose node. So that creates our basic spine and our basic control. We can now work on the solver, and to do that, I'll start with the rig attribute VOP. The first input will take our points, and the second one will take our controls. We will be creating our solver using the curve node, and we'll need a set point transform node, which will then connect to this curve node. We'll need the points for the spine, and we'll get these using a get point transforms node. In this case, we'll be using this to get the points, and the points will be feeding into our targets. Since this is not part of a larger rig, I'll just get all the points from our first input. We'll now need to use our controls to set the position of the curve. These controls will be connected to input 2, and will be set by our rig pose node. In our attribute wrangle node, we set all of these to have the name controls. We will get all of our controls individually using the get point transform node. I'll be setting these by name, and I'll start with my root, and that will be control 0, and we'll be getting this from our second input. I'm going to be using the transform to set the control, and currently the curve node does not accept transforms. So in the solver, I'm going to change the signature. I'll then change this to use transforms. So control zero will set our root. I can then duplicate this node. This will set control one. And this point will be setting our root tangent. I'll duplicate the node again, and this node should be setting control two. This will be setting the tip tangent. This can be duplicated again, and we'll be setting control three with this. Control 3 will be used to set the tip of the transform. Here I've made a simple error. I've named these incorrectly. They should be controls and not control. So we've now built our spine, and our spine still has consistent problems. The interpolation on the curve will work well for translation, 
but the rotation doesn't work particularly well. However, in this case we wouldn't be using the rotation for the curve in any case because it wouldn't give us the effect we are looking for. In order for this system to work, we are going to be replacing the skeleton itself. To do this we are actually going to update the geometry for the spine, and we are going to do this in two places. Firstly we will be updating the geometry after the spine as part of our solver, however in order for this to work properly we will have to update the skeleton itself. We will need to do this so that we can reweight the geometry with the updated skeletal bones. In this case I am not going to cover the entire setup for the skeleton, basically we want to create consistent names and transforms for both skeletons, and we have already done this with the attribute nodes, however you will need to be more specific on the calculations for the transforms. We will need to get some extra information from our points, in this case we will not be looking for information from our spine, instead we will be looking for the information from our controls. To do this I will get an attribute wrangle node, and this node will be connected to my rig pose node. This information will not be relevant to the solver, so I will not connect it to the solver itself. The attributes that we set with this node will be detail attributes. We can start by getting transforms. We will start with the matrix 3. This will have the name first M, as it will be my first matrix. I will get this as a point attribute. This will be set from input 0. This will be the transform attribute. The last attribute will specify the point, which will be point 0. This will give us the transform of the first control. We will then get the last control with matrix 3. The variable name will be last M. This will be set with a point function. It will be from input 0. We'll be getting the transform. The index will be 3, and this will give us the fourth point. So I've got the transforms for these points, and the next thing that I want to get from them is the rotations. In this case, I do not want the global rotations, I want the local rotations. I do not want to do a lot of calculations to get the rotations, instead, I prefer to be able to get them from the pose node. In other words, I want to get these parameters over here. Another thing is I want to get the rotations in degrees. So for example if I rotate the root, we will see that the rotation is listed in the pose node as degrees, and this is the value that I want to get. The easiest way to do this is from the rig pose node itself. We will go to the settings tab, we will then activate output parameters as attributes, and we will turn off everything except the parameter rotates. In the geometry spreadsheet we will see that we now have rotation parameters, and these will contain all of our rotations in degrees. By default the pose node will give us local rotations, so unless we specify otherwise this will give us the correct rotations. I can now get my information from these attributes, so I will have a vector, and this will be my first rotation, this is a point attribute, it will come from our first input, the attribute will be R, the point number will be 0 for our first point, I can then repeat this for our last point. The input will be 0, the attribute will be r, and the point number will be 3. I can now calculate a total rotation for my spine based off the root and the tip. I'll set this with the float attribute and I'll call this my total rotation. We'll start with the last rotation and we'll be calculating this for the rotation in y, and we will be subtracting the first rotation from this. This will also be the rotation in Y. The next thing that I want is an up vector for my controls, and we'll get this using the Z vector from the transforms for each of these controls. So I'll create a float attribute for the first one, and this will be called my first up. I'll then set this from my first matrix. So first matrix dot ZX, first matrix dot ZY, and first matrix dot ZZ. We'll then want the attribute for our last up, and this will be set with last m dot zx, last m dot zy, and last m dot zz. And both of these should actually be vector attributes and not float attributes. I now have my attributes and I can use them to update the curve. So now we're going to update the curve after our solver, and I'm going to do this using a sweep node. The sweep node is far easier than trying to do this manually, but it's not particularly straightforward to get this to work. In the sweep node, I'll change the surface shape to be a ribbon. This will give us geometry on our curve, 
but the results are rather questionable. We have a twist at the top of our curve which does not seem to match up with our points, and the points at the bottom of the curve do not line up with our transform at all. So in order to get rid of this, we'll need to update this curve quite a lot. We'll select the Construction tab and start working on parameters there. And the first thing that we'll work on will be our up vectors. These will allow us to set the orientation of the sweep. We could try and pass through the information for the sweep as an attribute, but this does not work particularly well. So instead we're going to set up a custom attribute, and initially I'm going to set up a custom up vector for both the tip and the root. This will lead to problems later, but it will make our initial setup of the sweep easier. The next thing that I'm going to change is the tangent, and in this case I'll set it so that it is no longer using the point attributes for the tangent. So now we want to start setting our up vectors, and we'll start setting them from our attribute wrangle node. There is however nothing connecting our attribute wrangle node to our sweep node, so we will need a way to reference the attributes on that node, and the way to do this is to add a spare input. We'll click on the gear icon and the parameters, and in the drop down menu we'll look for add spare input. The spare input will be added at the bottom of our parameters. I can then reference my attribute wrangle in this spare input. In this case I haven't renamed my attribute, so this will be attribute wrangle 1. I'll now be able to reference all the parameters on my attribute wrangle node. So I'll go to the x value in my up vector, and this will be looking for a detail attribute. The first argument of the detail function will reference our inputs, and all the spare inputs are negative numbers starting at negative 1. So our argument will be negative 1 for our spare input. We'll then be adding the attribute from our attribute wrangle node, and the attribute that we'll be adding is our first up. As this is the x value, we'll be getting index 0. I'll copy and paste this. Our y value will use index 1, and our z value will use index 2. I'll then need to correct my typos. This should be a lowercase p. Our curve is now aligned along the transform. There is a little bit of rotation around the z-axis, but I'd expect that in any case. I can then repeat the process for my tip, so we'll look for a detail attribute. The input will be negative 1, this will be referring to our last up, and the index will be 0. For the y-axis, we'll use index 1, and for the z-axis, we'll use index 2. The sweep is now far closer to what we want, and there is no longer a twist in it. However, if I twist the controls, we'll see that the curve flips over when we pass 180 degrees. This will apply for both the negative and positive angles. So now we can work on the twist itself. To do this, we'll go to the Surface tab. We'll be updating the rotation parameters. Specifically, we'll be updating the partial twist parameter. We we'll want this partial twist parameter to reflect the total rotations for our controls. We've already created an attribute for this, so we can refer to this using our detail attribute function. The attribute we created for this was our total rotation, and that was calculating the complete rotation for these two points. We'll need to refer to our spare parameter, and we'll do this with negative 1. The attribute will be our total rotation attribute. In this case, the index will be 0. I should now be able to rotate my controls, and I should be able to have a twist which goes beyond 180 degrees. We have now improved our twist, but the orientation for our controls is not perfect. In this case I'm not trying to make sure that this orientation is perfect, but we can try to improve it. To do this I'll enter the curve solver. The first thing that I'm going to work on with the curve solver is the twist. This isn't relevant to the handles, but we'll make sure that this is set to none. This will lower the likelihood of unexpected behavior. We'll then change the orientation for the controls, and we'll make sure that the orientation for the root and the tip is set by the controls. This can give us a slightly better match on the rotation around the z-axis, but it will not correct the rotation entirely. So the next thing which I'm going to do is something which you'd want for a very detailed cartoony character. This is definitely not something which would apply for a game engine though. And that is, I'm going to resample this curve. So I'll get a resample node. I'll turn off maximum segment length, and we'll be working with maximum segments. 
I'll set this to have a higher number, far higher than I'd ever actually use for a rig, but this will allow us to see how our curve is actually performing. So we can now see the kind of detail we can get out of this curve, but we can also see that we have a problem and that is once again a problem of flipping. So now I'm going to take a look at the errors that we've got. I've set up the spine in a neutral position and I've animated the rotation on the tip. So I've set this from a rotation of a negative 360 degrees to 700 degrees. And this should allow us to see the full range of rotation. So now we can examine the problem and what we'll see is we get flipping whenever we pass 180 degrees. So basically we are having flipping whenever we pass 180 degrees or negative 180 degrees, which is the same problem which we'll have when we use vectors or quaternions for rotation. The problem is actually reasonably simple to fix and is because of something we did earlier. So I'll start by removing the expression from my rotation. We can now take a look at the animation without the extra expression added. And we're back to where we were before we added the twist. Our tip is rotating, we get a flip every 180 degrees. And our problem is, we are adding the rotation to this existing rotation. We actually need to remove this rotation for the other rotation to work correctly. So I'll return to the construction and we will no longer use the direct control for our tangent. We will now have no rotation at all for our control. I'll now return to the surface tab and we'll set up the rotation again. I'll once again set the detail attribute for the partial twist parameter. And now the spine should once again follow the rotation of the control, but now we'll no longer have the problem of flipping. So that will give us the deformation for the spine. The next thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to create the transforms for the spine. I'm not going to go through all the steps of this, but I'll explain the gist of it. We'll need to make sure that our sweep is duplicated for the skeleton. As long as the point names match for the spine and the skeleton, we'll be able to skin the character. So in this case, I'll need the resample node and I'll need the sweep node. We will need to remove the original points from the spine. Instead, we are going to reconstruct our transforms from the sweep node. We can do this in multiple ways using the ribbon. The most flexible results will come from using the points at the boundary of the sweep. So we could cut the number of the columns down to two. So we'd convert all of these outer points to bones by giving them a transform and a name. And we would remove all of the inner points. We'd of course have to do this for the skeleton as well. The best option would probably be to calculate their transforms relative to the original spine. They could also be calculated relative to each other. All of this should be done both as part of the solver and in the base skeleton itself. So here I have the sweep node and I'll need to make sure that the base parameters for this sweep node match with the parameters for the sweep node in the solver. While the main advantage for this rig is the number of twists, we have another advantage which we get out of this. And that is that we do not just have a control of the twist, we also have a control for the width of the character. We can use the scale attribute to control the width of the character, and it's also possible to update the profile of this using the ramp. So this is a basic example of using modeling tools to create a solver for a skeleton, and it will give you a reasonably flexible option for creating a cartoony spine.